uh, related on Viva Connections desktop and extensibility. Now, to be clear, uh, we do have a special topic on next Tuesday uh, on our monthly community around Viva Connections desktop, uh, where we're going to go more detailed on the on the value proposition, how to set it up, how to configure that, and all of that. Today, uh, we're going to only focus on the extensibility, or that's the main topic of today. Uh, but again, you'll understand how the system hopefully works better, um, what are the options to extend and change, what's visible in the Viva Connections desktop, and what does it mean in practice. That's really the objective of today as well. Now, before we go there, uh, I wanted to actually show some updated slides related on our overall message, but uh, Viva Connections uh, and Viva Microsoft Viva in general is a really, really big thing uh, in our pipeline. So it is considered as a new kind of an application, even though it's kind of a combination of the SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. So if you think about the extensibility in the Microsoft Viva, and especially Microsoft Viva Connections in this case, uh, we talk about SharePoint framework. So the SharePoint framework even though it's called SharePoint, it's not only for SharePoint, it is also for Microsoft Viva Connections and, and of course for the Microsoft Teams. And we're investing heavily on the story that you can reuse the same component in multiple different areas. We know that there are some improvements still to be done here and there, uh, and all of that is being addressed, of course. Um, in general, SharePoint Framework has been surprisingly su uh, successful. Um, so we haven't actually talked about how successful, um, except pretty recently we started saying, well, Right now, uh, SharePoint Framework is being used by tens of millions of end users um, using third-party components every single month. So tens of millions of end users are using third-party components built with SharePoint Framework every single month. And that's a pretty mind-blowingly big number considering that there are two, well, well I think Jeff Deeper said in Ignite that there's, as an example in SharePoint Online, there's 200 million end users. Uh, of course, that number has already moved forward because Ignite was like a month ago. Uh, the numbers are just leaping forward all the time. Uh, but there's uh, the SharePoint framework has been adapted super, super well uh, throughout the, the historical things and, and the growth is just phenomenal. Now, as part of this uh, transition, then we are introducing Microsoft Viva. And just to be clear on, on explaining also what is Microsoft Viva, it is basically a set of products. So Microsoft Viva is kind of a product suit, or I'm not for marketing, so I'm not super sure how they actually position this, but from a simplification perspective, it's a suit of products which are part of a larger brand, which is then the Microsoft Viva. For now, there's four of the, the different applications, which all have their own licensing and uh, usability story. Some of them are free, like Viva Connections Desktop is completely free. Uh, there's no license implication as part of their SharePoint and Teams license. Some of them, like Viva Topics, has a, a specific license for a monthly usage based on a user. Again, if you're interested on the cost details, uh, have a look on the on the documentation. Uh, for the Microsoft Viva topics, uh, uh, Naomi Moneypenny was actually doing a great demo and coverage on that one, including licensing discussion in the last monthly community call for SharePoint. But today uh, we wanted to talk about the connections and connections is really about the fact that we are combining the best of both both worlds truly uh, from a Microsoft Teams and a SharePoint Online perspective. So we're making that SharePoint Online integrated more natively within Teams. We have supported certain level of this kind of an integration in the past. Uh, I've even created two videos related on that one in YouTube, which are which have like 10,000 views or thousands and thousands of views, which is pretty cool. Um, but the Viva Connections takes that to another level. So there's an additional level of integration and an improved experience when we do this matching between a SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams. And what it actually means is that we are having uh, basically a custom branded application created. Uh, we're going to talk about the future and, and all of that stuff in the in the pretty soon as well. But right now you can create a custom branded app. Uh, you can actually have an access to your global assets and global navigational assets and your information directly uh, to from this uh, custom branded app icons. So and when you click it, you'll see the global navigation. Right now that, by the way, isn't working for most of the tenants because uh, at the moment the app bar deployment is in hold because of random issues, which I can't go uh, to a more detail, but that will continue pretty pretty soon. I think the app bar is now out roughly in 10% worldwide. So that's the reason why I haven't actually seen that functionality yet demonstrated that much. And uh, supports internet search. So when you're searching something in the Microsoft Teams, uh, that actually the, is available from the internet, well, the search bar, 
accessing the internet search as well. And when you press enter, you will be redirected to your enterprise search uh, UX uh, based on your tenant settings. You also have a full uh, screen now uh, support with the header navigation, actually as a footer navigation with contextual actions to support collaboration. So in the past, when you embedded a SharePoint online site in Teams, navigation was gone. There was additional, let's say, adjustments or additional inconveniences related on that experience. Um, and that the, all of that has been addressed with the Vivo Connection desktop release. And the key point here to understand is that you as a customer or if you're a partner, you are the one who designs what's available in this UX. So we as a Microsoft, we do not dictate any of these capabilities. You are the one who designs, for example, applications based on this experience, and then you surface those as individual personal applications um, in the uh, inside of the Microsoft Teams. So we're truly getting the story integrated, and you can expect in the future that this is getting much better and better and better. So this is only a start, what we're seeing right now. How do we get started on this journey? Uh, is that you create a SharePoint online communication site with your preferred design and content. Again, you design what is there. This, we don't dictate what has to be in there or what's available in the site, even though most of our marketing material are always showing the same picture. So don't get fooled on that. You are, the, you are in control of defining what's visible in the Viva uh, Connection Desktop. You can use any SharePoint framework extensibility options. So basically, you can use any custom web parts any out-of-the-box web parts, any SharePoint favorite um, header or footer extensions in that uh, design as well. So again, you are responsible for designing what's available inside of this view. So full control. For the best possible experience, you will set that site as a uh, home site in the tenant, not needed necessarily, but that gives you the global navigation support when you click the uh, icon in the left navigation. Um, and the global navigation should be enabled as well. Again, right now that capability isn't yet working worldwide uh, because it's not fully rolled out, but that's going to be addressed uh, relatively soon. After all of that has been done, you create a Viva desktop app solution. And right now this is done using a SharePoint Online PowerShell script, PMP PowerShell or CLI for Microsoft 365. So the three options, they all result exactly the similar kind of a manifest solution and a solution file, which it then can deploy to the Microsoft Teams deployment and con control that to be visible using the app policies. So basically you can say that for all of the employees in your company, whenever they open up Microsoft Teams, your own Contoso, Litware, whatever Adventure Work, whatever is your company name, application is visible in the top left corner. And from there, there's the corporate communicational stuff, which is a typical scenario, but there could be much more. There could be alternative experiences, again, up to the design, up to the innovation of the customer and you as a partner. Now, what are those extensibility options? I just want to make sure that we are super clear. You have full control said 25 times, but it's super clear and super uh, important that you understand you control what's included in the Viva Connection experience. And again, technically you can have multiple experiences, but there's always the one primary one. The primary story is basically that you said there was one site currently as a home site in a tenant, and then you expose that as a Viva Connection desktop experience. But technically you can have multiple experiences exposed. So there's no limitation of the, how many applications are being exposed. So you can have additional ones as well. You can use all of the same out of the box custom SharePoint framework web parts or, or out of the box or custom SharePoint framework web parts as normal in SharePoint Online. So technically it is your SharePoint Online portal, which we're integrating directly in the uh, inside of the Microsoft Teams. And you can extend the experience also using SharePoint framework extensions like header and footer extensions. We're going to show a quick demo on that one today just to show off that it's actually truly possible. And obviously in the larger scale, this means that the same component which can be then exposed in the Viva Connections in a SharePoint or in the Microsoft Teams as a web part, as a tab or a personal application. So again, we have this power of flexibility of one implementation, and then uh, we can expose the same piece of information in the multiple locations uh, so that the end user can access the information which is relevant for him or her or him uh, in, the, in the most convenient way, which is really, really cool. Now, there's a good question from Aravind. Uh, Viva Connections only work with Teams. Can we have an independent SharePoint site without using Teams? Absolutely. So this, just to be super clear, what you're seeing here is SharePoint communication site, which can be accessed directly using a browser, 
or then we bundle that as a Microsoft Viva Connection application. It's just a matter of creating and surfacing that existing SharePoint communication site inside of Microsoft Teams in a more polished way. And right now, when we're doing this, we need to do this using a PowerShell script. We are creating this manifest file. All of that is getting much more polished uh, as part of this journey. I'm going to talk about slightly the future journey, but I can't talk about too much. And we're going to talk about in general more on next Tuesday in the monthly community call. Now, let's actually have a quick demo on this one. I'm not going to spend too much time on the demo, but making sure that everybody understands what's possible. So uh, first of all, uh, the announcement of Viva Connection Desktop uh, came last week. The reason why I'm explicitly calling it Viva Connections Desktop is that it's not really the full Viva Connections experience, which we exposed and released last Wednesday. Um, from social media, we actually saw people reacting like, well, is, it, is this only the thing? There's so much more pass and, and marketing uh, marketing moment on the, on the February and people might have actually got slightly disappointed, but it's actually much more than this. So there will be additional releases, additional capabilities, additional options uh, during summer timeframe. And I think the next big conference where we're going to demo and talk about things is the Microsoft Build happening on 25th to 27th of May uh, as a virtual conference, which I, I, that's a free conference as well. So you can actually get more insights on what's happening. Now, what does it actually then mean in practice? So in the past, we already had a way of embedding a SharePoint portal experience inside of Microsoft Teams. And what it actually means meant is that we're going to take a SharePoint site, you just sign a SharePoint site, and you were able to surface this one in Teams. And in this case, I've just created a, a random SharePoint site using the Lookbook site. And let me actually quickly just show that one, just making sure that everybody is 100% aware of this. Um, we are going to actually do a refresh of a lot of these designs as well pretty soon, uh, more aligned to Viva Connections. But from here, you can easily surface example portals and sites and experiences. And then in my case, what I've done here is that I provisioned the landing template, and then I added a, a few custom web parts on the site just to demonstrate that you can uh, design and adjust this any way you want. It doesn't have to be a root site, by the way, it can be any other site as well. So I'm just using a root site for a convenience perspective in this case, uh, but it doesn't have to be a root site. So super important thing as well. But I have a custom, a custom experience in here. I have a few custom web parts and we want to surface this inside of the Microsoft Teams using Viva uh, connection way. Now, in the past, as a preview capability like that, we actually released this guidance already more than a, almost a year ago from June to, uh, 20, uh, June last year, where when you exposed the portal inside of the Microsoft Teams, you noticed that you were able to do that, but the experience wasn't really optimal. There wasn't a navigation in top and all of that stuff. And, and yes, you could bundle things, but it wasn't really uh, an optimal experience. And Viva Connections Desktop is really taking additional steps, moving this experience more uh, aligned and more forward. So here is what I've done in this particular environment, where you can actually see now that exactly the same SharePoint online portal being surfaced as a Viva Connections application and experience in the Microsoft Teams. And it also works obviously in the desktop. Uh, so you can absolutely use the desktop experience. In mobile, there are things which we still need to adjust and improve. And I'll talk about that one it's a bit slightly uh, after the demo as well. But here we can see a, a Viva desktop connections and a few things to notice. There's a custom web port. I could, of, of course, I can adjust what's visible in here. And a good point to notice as well that I have a custom folder, which is actually all the time floating on the page. So in my case, if I scroll down, you can see that the folder is all the time visible in the here. Um, I'm not going to zoom in. Just well, let's see if I can actually get the experience slightly better. There, oh, wrong direction. Here we go. So now you can actually see that the left, uh, sorry, the, the footer on the page is visible all the time. So I'm basically creating this kind of a shim where the information is available and the footer which is on the page. If I go back in here, you can see the same footer in the SharePoint online page. It's actually being exposed in the same way in the Viva uh, Connections desktop experience. By the way, if I would use this exactly the same color for this footer, that would start looking really cool. Anyway something to consider maybe in your design and experience. But again, you can design and this page any way you want 
any layouts, any adjustments. You can come in the SharePoint side, you can do the modifications in here, and the same modifications, of course, are then visible in the Microsoft Teams side. So it is just a normal SharePoint portal page, which is which you can adjust any way as needed. So as an example, let's say something super classic on leads example. And republish that one. And let's go back in the, the team side. I will have a look on the leads as a personal application, which of course the same implementation works as a personal application. But now what I've done is that I've actually exposed a SharePoint framework solution natively as part of the Viva Connections desktop. As long as it loads, there we go. And there inside of that page is a custom SPFX web port on top of the other SPFX web parts using Microsoft Craft behind of the scenes, um, securely surfacing information. But this way we can design whatever experiences we want to design, including all of the SPFX extensibility which we have available. Now we're running out of time. I'm just going to pinpoint uh, for, for the Teams extensibility, all of those metrics, and uh, those are going to be updated as part of this one as well. So these do count in the future as an experience for the Teams extensibility. And then uh, as a quick summary for the next steps, just to be super clear, this is just a first step of the journey. And there's going to be a more native experience to adjust and configure the Viva, Viva desktop, connect, connect Viva Connections desktop um, and the Viva Connections in general. And um, from the marketing materials, you can actually also see that there's some sort of mobile experience being shown in a lot of these materials. And that's something which we haven't yet talked about uh, openly but that gives you an indication where we're also investing in the future. So there were going to be a more investments and more extensibility points, more component types, more adjustments, uh, which are targeted for a better configuration or better user experience options across multiple different devices. So all of this is coming and more around the options, more details on the schedules and all of that is going to be released in Microsoft Belt 2021. Now I'm going to close up this one, uh, Patrick, if you don't mind, it's just easier this way because I have the slides here. Uh, just a quick reminder uh, for next Tuesday, we do have a getting started with Microsoft Viva desktop. This is more feature PM owning, not the extensibility, rather the positioning. What does it do? How do you set it up? What are the options on configuration? What are the administrative options and all of them are going to be covered by Deshas and, and Pratik, who are the PMs who are actually responsible of creating Microsoft Viva Desktop. So they are the ones who actually started working on this one quite a few months ago or years ago already uh, and been working uh, as the primary contact persons between the Microsoft Teams and ODSP, which is OneDrive and SharePoint. And they're going to do a 40 minute uh, special session on next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm.